Joining me now, Steve Forbes. He is chairman and editor-in-chief of Forbes Media, and Austin Goolsby, professor of economics at the University of Chicago and former chairman of the Council of Economic Advisors under President Obama. Gentlemen, thank you both. Steve, I want to come you. to you uh, first and read you a couple of tweets uh, in defense of billionaires by billionaires, this comes off the whole discussion about income disparity and the upper 1% versus uh, everybody else. Uh, the first comes from venture capitalist Tom Perkins, who says uh, of an idea he has. You don't get to vote unless you pay a dollar of taxes. You pay a million dollars in taxes, you get a million votes. Then a real estate billionaire Sam Zell said, the 1%, meaning the top 1%, work harder. And finally, from Bud Conheim, who is uh, a fashion uh, co-founder and CEO of a fashion outlet, we've got a country that the poverty level is wealth in 99% of the rest of the world. So we're talking about woe is me, woe is us, woe is this. So I just, in, in defense of billionaires, I don't think they're doing you any good in this fight. Well, I think uh, instead of just focusing on a few individuals who have uh, opinions that uh, you might find fun at a bar on Saturday night or not, uh, <laughs> the real problem in the economy today is the lack of upward mobility. Uh, median incomes today are lower than they were five years ago. This is the worst recovery in American history from a sharp economic downturn. And unfortunately, government policies, including those of the Federal Reserve, have made the situation worse, not better. And Austin, you know, as you know, the income disparity is uh, all the rage now, particularly in Democratic circles, as they push a number of initiatives. I, and I think Steve sort of hits the points that Republicans are making, which is this is not about income disparity. It's about opportunity disparity. Has this been poorly packaged? Well, I don't know if it's an issue to be packaged. I, I think I agree with Steve that the most important thing is that we get the growth rate of the economy up. Fundamentally, I think what has happened, the reason the recovery, now we're getting a little bit of momentum, but the reason it's been so slow is we had a bubble. The main drivers of growth of the 2000s were fundamentally not sustainable and false. And if the economy can't go back to doing what it was doing before the recession began, if it has to shift industries and shift geographies, that takes a long time. But, you know, the the sympathy for guys who believe that they're victims of the Holocaust because their valet did not get their car fast enough, I mean, that's kind of goofiness. And, and certainly at the side of the debate about the economy, I think you heard in our open that there is some debate about what kind of recovery this is. Have the basics of what fuels the U.S. economy changed since recovery began or since the, the recession, Steve? Well, in any uh, vibrant economy, you're always going to get a change of uh, new industries, new companies coming along. Remember in the 1970s, I'm old enough to remember back then, Microsoft, Apple, Amgen, FedEx, and other companies were uh, tiny babies then and became the giants they are today. So you're always getting that kind of shift. But what's remarkable about this recovery is that uh, we haven't had a sharp upturn. Uh, we, uh, we saw in the 1970s a terrible decade, but after we got things straightened out in the early 80s, by golly, the economy took off. So you get a sharp downturn, you always get a sharp upturn. And we're not getting that this time. And the Fed Reserve has been practicing trickle-down economics. They messed up the credit markets, which hurt credit accession for small and new businesses, which are the job creators, and try to prop up the stock market, which, guess what, helps upper-income people. And yet the Democrats gave a buy to Ben Bernanke and uh, put in uh, 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 Janet Yellen as the uh, successor to Ben Bernanke, practicing a policy that hurt credit markets and hurt job creators, the new businesses. And Austin, it is true, is it not? Wall Street, I mean, I'm sorry, Main Street, if you, if you ask the general public, are we headed in the right direction? Does it feel like it's getting better? By and large, they say no. What we see every day, and I know Wall Street's actually not been doing that well, I think, in January, but nonetheless, there, there seems to be this recovery, if you will, for the upper income and no recovery in the middle incomes. Well, I think as a factual matter, that, ha that has been true. And that, that did not begin now. You know, through the 2000s, the median family income fell $2,000. We then had the worst recession of our lifetimes. And now we've had a modest recovery uh, since then. And I think that that does characterize it. But the, if, if you look at the surveys where they ask small business people, what is the biggest barrier to your growth? by far the overwhelming barrier 
is that people are not buying their, their services and their, and their products. So it, it right. absolutely is not government policy that's interfering with that. It's that the U.S. with two, two and a half percent growth, which is not enough, is among the fastest growing countries of the advanced world. I mean, we, this is a major worldwide problem that we're confronting. So it, it, it isn't great, and I want to, there's a, a couple of issues that are out there, um, certainly that the Obama administration is pushing. And I want to get both of you to r ring in on whether um, these initiatives will help or hurt the economy going forward, which I think we all can say can't take any huge blows. And, and the first is on the subject of raising the minimum wage. When the president signed his executive order, raising minimum wage for federal contract workers, here's something he said. Owners of small and large businesses are recognizing that fair wages and higher profits go hand in hand. It's good for the bottom line. Increase in the minimum wage, good for the bottom line, Steve? Uh, well, Janet Yellen uh, let the cat out of the, out of the bag on that one uh, when she was asked in recent testimony about raising the minimum wage. She said those who keep their jobs, yes, that's very nice. But she acknowledged that it will be a job killer. It will destroy jobs. Remember, uh, in terms of uh, minimum wage, they're often with businesses with small margins. And uh, 80, two thirds of the people who start out in minimum wage are above the minimum wage within a year when they get uh, skills. And uh, most minimum wage workers, thankfully, are part of households where uh, they're part of a uh, earning uh, capacity where uh, they're not the sole breadwinner. But artificially raise, trying to raise wages when you have an economy that is being hurt by the tax code, hurt by the Federal Reserve, hurt by this uh, crazy health care thing we call Obamacare, uh, that is just going to make the problem worse for those who need the help the most, those who have no skills or trying to break into the workforce. Those, those are the ones who are hurt when you substantially raise the minimum wage. Austin, is, this a, is minimum wage an economic issue or is it a political issue in Washington? I think certainly in Washington it's a political issue, but everything's a political issue in Washington. I would say sure that. Uh, when I saw the president in the State of the Union, it was calling for minimum wage, raising the earned income tax credit, investing in skills and education for low-skilled people, early education, community college. He's, he's identified the issue of ordinary Americans' incomes being tied to an economic system where we want to get growth. And I think just snarking on any one policy, say, no, no, let's not do this one, let's not do that one. The overall broad issue is quite fundamental, that people don't get rich if they don't have customers. And if customers don't have income, they can't spend. And if we don't invest in the skill base of our workforce, we're going to fall behind other countries and, and other locations that are doing that. Doesn't and sound so like a. I, I hope we can together kind of address those issues because there's nothing more important than that. Yeah, it doesn't sound like a ringing endorsement for increasing the, the minimum wage.